us a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. Take the exam first on your own before watching these step-by-step -step solutions. The link is in the description. Six says, draw the most stable chair conformation of cis one tert butyl for methyl cyclohexane. We have to have a tert butyl on carbon one. We have to have a methyl on carbon four and they have to be cis to one another. So cis means they're on the same side of the ring. So we can probably rule out a couple of these just by noticing that they're not in the cis configuration. And so that's gonna be A and B because these are pointing in different directions. A and B are trans isomers. So on A, the methyl is up and the tert butyl is down. On B, the methyl is down and the tert butyl is up. So those are actually trans, so that's not gonna work. Now for C and D, these are both examples of cis one tert butyl for methyl cyclohexane, but they are not of equal energy. These are the two differing chair conformations that are possible. And so what do we notice? We notice that in option C, the methyl group is equatorial and the tert butyl group is axial. We see that the methyl is sort of at an angle and the tert butyl group is straight down. So that means that it is able to make these diaxial interactions, these unfavorable diaxial interactions with those hydrogens there. Over here for option D, the methyl group is axial and the tert butyl group is equatorial. So that means that it is now the methyl group that is making the unfavorable diaxial interactions. So this is an example of steric hindrance. We wanna minimize steric hindrance. The less steric hindrance there is, the lower the energy will be for that conformation and the more stable it will be. The one that will be more favorable will be the less bulky group in the axial position. So here we have a methyl group axial that is better than having the tert butyl axial. The tert butyl group is much, much bulkier, so there will be a lot more steric repulsion with those diaxial interactions with the protons there. The methyl group is much smaller, so it will produce diaxial interactions, but much less so. It will be much more stable. The configuration in D, that will be the more stable chair conformation of this molecule, of the two that were possible. Every chair will have two chair conformations. And then A and B didn't work because they were trans, not cis, so they were not examples of the molecule in question. Seven asks, what is the relationship between the compound in line notation and the adjacent Newman projection? Very clearly, looking at this Newman projection, we've got an OH on the front and a CL on the back, so we're definitely looking at this like this. We are looking down this carbon-carbon bond right here, so that is the carbon-carbon bond that we cannot see. It is obscured by the carbon atom that we are looking at, and so what do we notice? If we are looking down that bond, we're going to have a methyl group projecting directly upwards. So that's right there. We will have OH down and to our right, because if we are in the plane of the screen and that OH is projecting forwards from the screen, it is going to be down and to our right. And then the implied hydrogen will be down and to the left, so that's fine. Then looking at the back carbon, we have a chlorine atom that is going to be up and to our right. Because again, if we are in the plane of the screen and that chlorine is projecting outwards from the screen, that is going to be up to our right, is gonna be pointing to our right there. So that's there. And then there's an implied hydrogen up and to the left. And then this methyl is pointing directly down. This actually is identical. This Newman projection does represent the molecule in line notation. This is the same compound and it is in the same conformation. So we could have had the same compound in different conformations. That would be if we took either the front carbon or the back carbon and rotated it in some way. So we could have had the chlorine where the hydrogen is, the hydrogen where the methyl is, the methyl where the chlorine is. That would have been the same compound, just we would have rotated that central carbon-carbon bond to get a different conformation. But certainly they're not different compounds. We know that it's the same atoms and the same connectivity. They're not different compounds. They're not different formulas. They're not different constitutional isomers. We can tell immediately that they're the same compound. And then by translating the line notation to the Newman projection and seeing that it matches the Newman projection we have, that's how we know that it is the same compound and furthermore in the same conformation. 
Okay, number eight asks, which is the lowest energy conformation for cyclohexene? So this one's pretty straightforward. Option A is chair. Let's just draw the chair really quick. And so what we need to understand about the chair is it does a couple of things. First, it allows for all of the carbons to obey the perfect tetrahedral geometry that they enjoy. For example, we've got two hydrogens right here. We can essentially imagine this as being a wedge bond and this as being a dash bond down to those other carbons. But however you want to visualize it, it has that perfect tetrahedral geometry with 109.5 degree bond angles. And then the other thing it does is that all of the Newman projections for all of these bonds would put the different alkyl groups as anti to one another. So for example, this carbon-carbon bond is anti to this carbon-carbon bond. And you can do that for all of the carbon-carbon bonds. So number one, there are no eclipsing interactions. The alkyl are not eclipsing one another or the hydrogens are not eclipsing one another. And also everything is anti to one another, which is specifically the best. There are not even any gauche interactions. All of the alkyl being anti to one another, all of the carbon centers being able to obey 109.5 degree bond angles, the flawless tetrahedral geometry that carbon atoms prefer. For those reasons, it is a chair. When you look at boat, twist boat, half chair, these are all configurations that produce eclipsing interactions or these other destabilizing effects, which is why a chair will pass through these configurations during a chair flip. When we go from one chair to the other chair, it passes through these configurations, but ultimately we'll get to the other chair because those are the two lowest energy conformations for cyclohexane for these reasons that we just described. Number nine asks, when a chair flip occurs, substituents that are cis to one another, blank, while axial substituents, blank. So let's draw a chair that'll be in equilibrium with the other chair. The leftmost carbon had that methyl. That was up, so it'll stay up, but it'll now be equatorial. Hydroxyl was up right there, and now it'll remain up, but now it'll be axial. The thing that we have to understand about the two chair conformations, if a molecule has substituents that are cis to one another or trans to one another, that is not going to change when the chair flips. That is an aspect of the molecule itself. So when it is cis, it is going to remain cis, right? These two substituents, the methyl and the hydroxyl, will remain cis to one another. But what happens is that any substituent that is axial in the other chair will be equatorial. And any substituent that was equatorial in the other chair will become axial. So here we have an axial substituent becoming equatorial. It is still pointing up from the ring, but axial becomes equatorial. And then the hydroxyl equatorial there becomes axial. Again, still pointing up, but when that chair flips, it gets pushed into the axial position. The answer we are looking for is that the substituents that are cis to one another remain cis, but axial substituents become equatorial. So that is going to be option B. Number 10 asks, which side of the equilibrium is favored and why? So we have two chair conformations for this compound. They're going to be of differing energies, and that is going to have to do with the substituents being either equatorial or axial. So here we have a methyl that is axial.